In this next video, we're going to take a look at creating a storyboard or an animation of our subdivision that we could send to potential clients or stakeholders in the project. And even to show our coworkers and whatnot of what the subdivision is going to look like. Now we've taken the time, we've put some houses in, we put some trees in, we put a lake in, we made it look all nice. Let's create what's called a storyboard inside of InfraWorks. And that can be accessed under the create uh, infrastructure create and conduct infrastructure design presentations and then we have the storyboard creator which is the very first button on the left hand side there. Now I'm going to click storyboard creator and it's going to bring up our storyboard here. We can add captions and titles and then our paths and animations is down below. When we click story or the storyboard creator down here we have one storyboard name. We can add multiple storyboards inside of our file if we want. We can hide the storyboard library, we can right click add new storyboards, we can delete, we can export them. And if we have uh, other ones from another site that's similar to this, we can import those storyboards as well. So the first thing I'm going to think about here is how I want this video to portray. How do I want this subdivision to be viewed through my, through my storyboard? And I think I'm going to start it up in the air here. I'm going to have it fly over to this location and then swoop down and maybe follow along the road a bit and then come up and circle around the pond and then finish with an overall view of the subdivision like this. So just a couple of steps and we can look at the, the tools that we have there. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on add a camera path animation. We could have it automatically just go down the entire road. It will drive down the road. We'll, we'll say a meter above, two meters above, and offset it by a little bit. But I want to add a camera path animation, which will place it down below here. Now, if we look off to the right, we can name our camera path. We can set the keyframe. The buttons we're going to be using are add a new keyframe after the currently selected one. Not, not this button again for another animation. Any waiting times, how we want the transitions to work. Uh, the time to next keyframe or we can set the speed that we want it to go from A to Z. So the first one I'm going to set for 250 kilometers an hour. So I want it to go from here and I'm going to pan over and zoom in and do something like this because I want it to swoop in and then drive down this road. So I'm going to add a new keyframe and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, come under the traffic light and line myself up for that road and then add a new keyframe. And as we see down here, from the beginning location to approaching the intersection, we are at nine seconds. The second one is around 10 seconds. Now, as soon as we get down here, I'm gonna set the speed to drive, to travel down this road here. A little bit slower so we're not flying down here and then I'm just panning or, or I'm just using my right mouse button to drive down the road a little bit and I'm gonna add another frame but this previous one so from three to four I want to set it for a hundred kilometers an hour oops and that should spread that out a little bit it might even be three that we have to set for a hundred yeah three to four for 100 kilometers an hour. I want to approach the corner a little bit and I want to start turning the corner. Add another little frame in. And it's going to keep the speed from the previous command because that's what I have it set to do. I know I can see through the ground here a little bit. We're going to fly down the road a little bit more to this corner. I'm basically tracing the path that I want the camera to go. Alternatively, you could draw a path in Civil 3D and export it and then re-import it into InfraWorks. And it can give you the path that you're looking for and you can specify the exact path. It'll follow that X, Y, and Z. So I'm coming down here into the cul-de-sac. Add another one. And I'm going to look off to the right here a little bit. 
and add my last one looking off here. Now I will be adding a few more, however, let's look at some of these other tools. If we click the little drop down, we can add what's called a crane animation, which will take the camera and just rotate it up. So if I double click here and hit play, we come into the subdivision and we rotate ourselves up a little bit. Distance up, so we can go 25 meters. Distance back, five meters. We can crane up, we can crane down. We can go left and right, or and we can unlock the camera. Depends on how we want it to look. So you can play with some of the options here. Let's see what I've changed now. So I told it to go 25 meters straight up now. It's not looking left, it's not looking right. It's not gonna focus anywhere. We can lock the camera down on the existing house down here if we want, however we don't want to. So once we're up here, let's take a look at a look around animation. We can angle to the left by 45 degrees or we can angle up. Alternatively, angle right and angle down. So let's see what this looks like in our storyboard. So we come up and then we angle to the left a bit. I don't think I want it to angle to the left. I want that to angle to the right. And look over here. And then I'm gonna select this. Maybe I want the view to fly over here a little bit and start rotating up. We're gonna transition. We don't want any of those transitions. We're gonna try the button over here and add another camera path animation. I'm not sure this is gonna give us what we want though. However, we can play it and see what happens. No, it looks like it jumps straight over there because it's back to the normal keyframe. So we can delete that. And I'm gonna figure out how to have it transition back into a path. All right, so after the look around, I'm gonna immediately add another camera path animation. So it goes from this frame to this frame. So I'm gonna add another keyframe. And we wanna set the speed of that to, we'll say 100 kilometers an hour. And we'll set the speed of that to 100. So as our video gets longer here, we can see we're now up to a 30 second video. That's gonna end off. And we wanna end off a little bit higher, so we'll add one more a little bit. So we'll go from this location and we'll rotate up and zoom out just a little bit more. And we'll add our final keyframe. So now if we go along and you just experiment with this, play around and see what kind of options InfoWorks gives you. These special tools, you can add crane animations, look around, orbit, pan and zoom, recorded walk, still motion, You can so you can focus on a still frame, tracks, zoom animations, etc. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna watch the entire storyboard and see what the entire subdivision looks like. So that was my entire storyboard there and it made a nice little, nice, nice little animation, but how do we get this in a format that other people can see? There's a little button here, export your current storyboards to video. Now this will go off your site resolution or we can use the viewport resolution, but if you want to make this full uh, 1080p H, uh, full HD, 
I want to go 1980 pixels by 1080. So this will just fit on my 27 inch monitor that I have here. It's going to be an uncompressed video. We can do Windows Media Video, Video Encoder, MJ Compressor. Some of these will give us properties on the format and the resolution we want. But I'm just going to select an uncompressed video. I want it to be 30 frames per second. You can lower this, you can raise it. And then I'm going to hit the record button. Now this is going to take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. It depends how big of a video you want. And I'll be back when that's done. All right, the video is finished exporting and I just have it on the screen here. I'm not going to play the whole thing because we have seen it, but I can now send this file to a prospective client or another member of the team, my boss maybe, and just get their input on that. The only problem is that video is 12.4 gigabytes for a 41 second video. So the resolution that you do export things that at have a or has a, a big impact on the video size. So again, just keep that in mind. We could probably put this in another video editing software and convert it down and lessen the quality. However, these are the tools and options that are given to us. So this is what we have to work with currently.